Hey guys, so today's video is insulating a motherboard for uh, extreme overclocking. In this case, this motherboard here will be on dry ice. And uh, this is a 990FX motherboard, Sabertooth motherboard. So to get started, we're gonna need a few things. So we're gonna need some plasti dip. This is just clear plasti dip. We need paint brushes. Um, these are just small paint brushes from uh, the craft store. We need a eighth inch foam. This is just neoprene foam. You could probably get this on Amazon. In fact, that's where I got this this foam here. It's on Amazon. And I will put the links to all of this stuff in the video description. And box cutter or some sort of utensil to cut the foam with. And blue paper towels. You get these at the auto store or Amazon. Get everything on Amazon. The first thing we want to do is Plasti Dip. Because that will be the first layer. So that's going to be actually on the board, so we're going to have to take off the heat sink and the mounting. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cover it with plasti dip, Just this area right here around the socket into the VRMs. So let's get started. Okay, so now we've taken it apart. Uh, we've taken the VRM heatsink off, the backplate off, and the mounting bracket for the CPU cooler off. And well, the first layer of protection, uh, while well, your extreme overclocking on, will be the plastic dip. Um, I find it easier to actually cut the foam at this stage because um, you don't have sticky plasti dip or you don't have to wait for the foam or the plasti dip to dry so it's just a lot easier to cut the foam at this point for those that aren't aware the whole point of this is to simply prevent condensation from getting into the components into the VRMs into the memory slots in between the power connector you know, you know individual pins or even the CPU and so to do this we use multiple layers so what I'm going to do is, I do have this piece here, but actually this piece might work. This motherboard is actually quite nice because it has a nice clear square area. Um, but basically the point of this is to cut it and stuff it in between. Like if you have gaps like this, this motherboard doesn't have it, but if you had capacitors here or closer, you can just put this in between and it actually acts as a thermal barrier between the pot, the LN2 or dry ice pot and the actual motherboard. So what we wanna do is we just wanna cut this to size and you wanna cut it a little bit. So for example, the capacitors that come here, you wanna cut it a little bit over those, the, uh, the, the piece of neoprene a little bit longer so it's, it makes a really tight fit. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to put the CPU in. And I'm just going to fill where the IHS is on the CPU and just cut it. So now we have our foam barrier. So the next thing we're gonna do is the plasti dip. 
this step, we're going to put the Plasti Dip on. And again, this is just regular old clear Plasti Dip in a can. You can use li liquid electrical tape. Um, and this is just to prevent water from actually getting in the components. And all we're gonna really do is paint it with, paint it on with a paintbrush very liberally. You want to use as much as you can use. So what you want to do is cover anything with circuitry on it. So, you know, your VRMs, in between your VRMs, your voltage controller, your capacitors, the edges of any connectors, for example, the memory slot edges, um, up to the edges of the processor socket without uh, affecting. You see this one can still open and close. And I've actually done a little bit more than I probably had to, is over here. Um, but I just wanted to be safe. Um, so now we're just gonna let it dry. Give it like, I don't know, Plasti Dip seems to dry pretty fast. I have a fan in this room, so it'll dry extra fast. Um, and then we're gonna do the back side. Okay, <clears throat> so the front of the motherboard seems to have dried enough so we can flip it over. And so now we're going to do the back of the board. And so I'm just gonna put this box right here, because it still is not, isn't completely dry yet. I'm going to cover it in Plasti Dip, watching out for the holes the screw holes because we don't want to cover those because if you cover them and try and poke something through later you could create air bubbles and pull up the Plasti Dip and that's what we're trying to avoid is air. the next day and the Plasti Dip is dried. So now we're going to cut some neoprene, cut some of this blue paper towel that I have here. Right here. And I've actually already cut some. And we will insulate the socket area. So the first thing I like to do is paper towel and the actual neoprene. 
because the neoprene will not absorb water. It looks like a sponge, it feels like a sponge, but really water will just run off of it. So I'm just going I just make it all the way around the socket area like that. <clears throat> and then I have my neoprene that's cut for the IHS. And what this does is it actually insulates from temperature, not so much water. It won't really do anything for water, like I said. It's more just a temperature barrier, because what you're doing all this for is condensation. Condensation is the enemy here. So you want as tight fit as you can get. And a nice trick is to actually cut the neoprene smaller um, because it does have some give in it. So if you cut it slightly smaller and just kind of stuff it in there, it actually makes a really tight fit. The last layer is another layer of paper towel. And then on the opposite side, we have paper towel and neoprene. This is just a sheet that's cut to the size of, of the ATX board, because that's what this board is. And then paper towel covering the top half of the motherboard. And then we have our Allen two pot. And just set it on the IHS with thermal paste. And that's pretty much it. Um, this particular Allen two pot is really heavy. So I find that I can actually not use mounting mechanism, to, you know, to press it down. And uh, it works out really well. Any condensation just drips directly onto this paper towel and it doesn't touch anything else. You will have to put some more paper towel here, possibly the second RAM slot. And you might want to put some paper towel right here on your video card. Um, just because, especially if you're using LN2, there could be uh, moisture coming out, uh, rather uh, water vapor, and it might get on things. Dry ice, it's not so much of a concern, but I have frosted this entire pot with dry ice before, so it, it happens. And then you know, we can just put our VRM heatsink back on. You might not actually need the VRM heatsink if you have a fan, which you should have a fan if you're doing extreme overclocking. You should have a fan set up somewhere here, right about here just to get the water vapor out. Yeah, so there's different schools of thought here. This is just the way I do it. Some people use Artisan's eraser. Some people will spray paint with um, Plasti Dip. They'll spray paint the whole board. The whole point of this is to prevent condensation and water to actually getting into the components. Um, you don't actually need to stuff the socket full of, some people put dielectric grease into the socket. You don't need to do that. Well, this is AMD, so you, I don't know how you would put dielectric grease in this particular socket. But for example, the LGA sockets, uh, people will stuff dielectric grease in and put the processor in there. Um, yeah, it's kind of silly. You don't really need to do that. Um, this is the way I do my insulation for my extreme overclocking. And I haven't had a problem yet due to condensation. So it's worked for me so far and it's quick. It takes less than a day. It's easy. So that's how you insulate a motherboard for extreme overclocking. Thank you for watching. Bye.